Moscow is back in lockdown today as a daily COVID-19 deaths hit another new record of over 1,100 on Thursday. President Vladimir Putin has ordered Russians to take a week off work and impose restrictions on public gatherings. In the capital, Moscow, all non-essential services are closed for the next 11 days. Despite the surge in cases, the majority of Russians have yet to heed urgent calls to get vaccinated. A new day, a new tragic record. As the highly infectious Delta variant continues to spread, Russia's COVID wards continue to fill, primarily with the unvaccinated. Images of patients infected with the coronavirus have become a fixture on Russian news programs, but they have done little to convince a skeptical population to get vaccinated. Forcing the authorities' hand, Moscow's mayor joined other regional leaders declaring an 11-day soft lockdown for the capital, closing bars, cafes, theaters, and other public spaces. It coincides with a federal week-long work holiday and stay-at-home orders for the elderly and vulnerable. Authorities hope the short firebreak will help them weather the pandemic's fourth wave. Health experts welcome the announcement, but warn it's too little too late. 11 days isn't enough at all. It's another example of a half measure and an attempt to please everyone. But you have to keep public health in mind. In the current situation, we can't use abstractions. We're talking about real deaths, real illness and long COVID. We have to put a stop to it. Vaccinations with Russian-made Sputnik V have increased in recent weeks, thanks to government mandates and new restrictions doubling to around 300,000 a day. But overall, only around a third of Russians have gotten their first shot. Of the rest, some say they'd rather wait for an international vaccine, but around half don't intend to get vaccinated at all, including many medical personnel, provoking growing frustration among the country's medical community. People aren't behaving correctly. It's sad to see it. Russia produced a great vaccine, Sputnik V. I have full confidence in Sputnik. It's comparable to vaccines produced in the West. Why don't we use it? I don't know. Frustration is also spreading among many in the service industry. The branch was especially hard hit by previous lockdown measures. And now they say they're paying the price for Russia's vaccine hesitancy and preparing for a long winter. We're looking at how we're going to survive the next lockdown. I think everything is going to be much harder because everyone understands this is just the beginning and it could go beyond the 8th of November. But we're just going to have to deal with it. As the Delta variant continues to spread, government officials warn Russia's fourth wave is only likely to get worse. And I'm joined now by DW correspondent Aaron Tilton in Moscow. Aaron, great to see you. Um, while in many European countries, death rates are declining, Russia has been reporting the highest death rate since the start of the pandemic. Uh, how did we get to this point? Well, uh, the situation in Russia is a little bit different than a lot of other European countries. Now, we often talk about the first, second, third, and fourth wave of COVID, but as one doctor I spoke to here put it, it's inappropriate to talk about waves because we're not seeing peaks and troughs here. Instead, he was saying that the uh, infection numbers, especially in Moscow, plateaued at a very, very high level in late summer. And then when the Delta variant came, it pushed those numbers up even higher. Now, you combine that with the country's very low rate of vaccination, and, well, it's a recipe for disaster. And Aaron, why is it that Russians are so reluctant to get vaccinated? Well, that really is the big question. Partially, I think it has to do with kind of a baked-in mistrust of the government and government information. And of course, you could describe it as cynicism or Russian fatalism, but it really stretched back decades back into the Soviet era. Um, so there's that aspect of it. At the same time, a lot of medical professionals I've spoken to have said that the vaccine rollout, and you have to remember, it was the first in the world, you know, their, vac their mass vaccination campaign is already 10 months old, but the rollout was rather half-hearted. You didn't necessarily see the Russian political elite 
athlete out there in front of the cameras, um, getting him injected and telling people to embrace the vaccine. And that kind of chipped away a little bit at the public trust and combine that with the international community's kind of rejection of Sputnik V and that all kind of uh, paints a picture of um, well, kind of eroding public trust in the vaccine. And it's really kind of a wicked problem for Moscow because they're telling people this is the best way to find our way out of the pandemic. But um, so far, people really aren't willing to get mass, uh, vaccinated in the way the country needs. Hmm. Let's talk about one of the breaking points that many governments around the world are nervous about. Uh, is there now a danger at this point that hospitals could become overwhelmed? Well, I would certainly say there is. Now, we have seen statements from um, various different hospitals, especially here in Moscow, saying that they're well equipped to deal with the current patient load that they are receiving. But at the same time, the very fact that we were returning to um, a soft lockdown here indicates that the city government thinks that these hospitals need a little bit of a break to catch their breath. Um, one doctor I talked to actually said that it's less about the uh, free beds and oxygen and um, other uh, products they need, and it's more about the doctors themselves. Yeah, to remember, a lot of the doctors here have been working for 18 months at a breakneck pace, and they're really kind of reaching their limit. And he said, you know, when you have tired and overworked doctors, that were, that's when mistakes start to happen. So um, at the moment, the very fact that we're returning to a lockdown does seem that, that, uh, that the city government at least thinks that the hospitals are in need of a little bit of a break and a little bit of a help moving forward. All right. Aaron Tilton for us in Moscow. Thank you so much for that update. Thank you. And we can take a look now at some of the other developments in the pandemic. Singapore is investigating what it calls an unusual surge of new COVID-19 infections. The city-state is seeing its highest infection figures since the pandemic began. And the health ministry says that's despite about 84% of the population being fully vaccinated. And New Zealand says it will begin loosening its border quarantine requirements. Once virtually COVID-19 free, the country had among the toughest restrictions in the world. China has also placed a third city under lockdown to tackle COVID-19 numbers, which means around 6 million people are under orders to stay at home. And here in Germany, concern is also growing about a recent sharp rise in the number of COVID-19 infections. On Thursday, Germany's Robert Koch Institute reported 28,000 new coronavirus cases in the previous 24 hours. The number of people admitted to hospital intensive care units in the last week has also risen. Authorities say the majority of patients being treated are unvaccinated and they're warning that the country is entering a critical phase in the pandemic. So for more on this, I'm joined by our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow in Berlin. Thomas, hi, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, why are infection numbers in Germany increasing like this? It's actually a mixture of various elements. On the one hand, the fact that we're approaching the colder months of the year where people tend to be uh, more indoors than outdoors. That's one element that authorities have certainly mentioned this time around, comparing it also to the situation one year ago when Germany also saw an increase in the number of cases as uh, the winter approach. At the same time, certain German states have just come out of their autumn holidays. So experts have also stressed that that could be one additional element to explain why numbers now are rising. And then there's also the issue of the unvaccinated here in the country, a particular matter of concern. Two thirds of Germans are fully vaccinated, but that leaves one third that are not vaccinated. Many of people are actually reluctant in that group to actually get a vaccination. And this is something that has authorities concerned for some time now, how to make sure that that vaccination rate, which yes, it may be more than many countries around the world, but it's not developing as fast as authorities would like. And authorities are actually struggling to convince the unvaccinated to take the jab. So this, these uh, explanations here actually help to understand why Germany now may be seeing this high number in infections and also how authorities may, uh, may be reacting in the next few days, in the next few weeks, to make sure that those numbers remain or at least decrease as much as possible. So, Thomas, just to be clear, clear those one third uh, who are unvaccinated in Germany, are they the ones who are being mainly affected by these new COVID infections? Mainly, yes, but not exclusively. So there is concern at the number of unvaccinated people, but there's also concern, for example, at the number of vaccinated people who have also now 
had an infection that is a matter of concern here in particular because of those booster jabs that are also under discussion. Then there's concern as well about the number of children and teenagers who have been infected. In fact, Germany saw also record numbers of under 15-year-olds who have been infected in recent days. And at the same time, let's not forget that there are over 9 million children under 12-year-olds for whom there is no approved vaccination. So these different age groups are certainly a matter that authorities are taking very carefully because they want to understand in particular how this situation will impact the overall number of infections in the country. Okay, so a complicated picture requiring a government response. Uh, now, of course, dealing with the pandemic restrictions is still officially the job of Angela Merkel's caretaker government. But the three parties currently holding coalition talks say they won't seek to extend the national state of emergency that allowed the government to impose general restrictions. Let's see if we can take a look. It seems like these that the three parties trying to form the next German government want to avoid. Lockdown hit the country hard. And I repeat, is not an option. School closures, lockdowns and curfews will in any case no longer happen with us and are also disproportionate in the current situation. The Social Democrats, the Greens and the Liberals presented their plans to deal with the coronavirus. The key measure, not to extend the national state of emergency. It allowed the government to quickly and controversially impose restrictions. Instead, affected regions would have specific measures to deal with a pandemic that is still not under control. We have a very high number of infections, especially among younger children, and we want to ensure that as much protection as possible continues to be guaranteed. At the same time, of course, it's also about ensuring that our health system is not overburdened in the future. Germany has seen yet another worrying increase in the number of infections. And vaccination numbers are not growing as fast as authorities would like. Around two-thirds of Germans are fully vaccinated. And some are worried. Of course, that's logical. Everyone will be worried. We don't want to close everything again. We've already had all that. I would not have thought it was possible that it would increase so much. People should be sensible and really think about it and actually get vaccinated. The pandemic will be a key challenge for the next German government. The three parties hope to sign a coalition agreement by the end of the year. Thanks, Thomas, for that report. Um, so as we've heard, the three parties hoping to form a new government want to end the national state of emergency. But have the recent numbers made them rethink that at all? Well, they are obviously concerned about the current situation. That's something that was also clear from the press conference when, it, when they announced their plans. I followed that press conference. But what they pointed out is that the situation this year, the situation now, is different from the situation, let's say, a year ago, partly because of the number of people who have accepted that vaccination. And what they now stress is that that national measure, that national state of emergency, is no longer required. Instead, what they want to move towards is to have more regional or local measures, depending on the number of infections in certain regions. At the same time, they also want to make sure that the German parliament has a louder and a bigger voice when it comes to determining how Germany, in the next few months, in the near future, deals with the coronavirus pandemic. Many thanks. Our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow, in Berlin.